going to be working on the Kawasaki Voyager. Yesterday I got the k and air filter in. Went ahead and put that in. Not a simple. Just take out the four bolts here. Exposes the filter. At the top of the filter there's a little screw. Take the screw out, take the filter out, put the k and in. And then uh, I've got these little caps that I use to uh, dress up the hardware. If you guys have been following me, you know that all my bikes I pretty much do that. I don't like to just have uh, hardware sitting around hollow allen uh, screws and you know something that collects dirt same thing on this side any bolt or allen screw that i can get my hands on i cover just put it insert and then uh we're going to be looking at removing the bags to get the exhaust to go ahead and put uh some new slip-ons on because the, these are nice but oh my god they're really really quiet and um down here in florida if people can hear you that's kind of a big help as far as um collision avoidance so anyway I'm not uh, sure how this is gonna go I've never <laughs> worked on a bike like this before um, my VTX I changed out the exhaust but it was the whole thing from here up okay this one here is at the seams on both sides is where I'll be removing um, I have to take the oxygen sensor out and all that neat stuff so anyway this might be involved but I uh, just thought I'd take you guys through it with me all right so I use uh, bag liners so all I have to do is grab the bag liner and pull it out, and that takes all the stuff out of there. Plus, it keeps it clean, keeps it from getting all scratched up in here. So it looks like, from here, it looks like a 10 millimeter. One, two, and three. So I'll go ahead and remove those on both sides. Then I'll remove the bags, and that'll give me plenty of access to the, uh, uh, the exhaust system. So this bike is pretty cool. So you have a preload at the top. And also, um, you can actually hook up an uh, air pump, like a bicycle pump, uh, one of the smaller home pumps. I wouldn't recommend the gas station pump uh, to go ahead and add air to this thing, to go ahead and raise and lower it, which is nice. Uh, the teeth down there, of course, anti-lock brakes on this bike, which is nice. But uh, there again, here's the seam right here. And this is what I need to replace. So I'm going to have to get into, uh, let's see here, and the bolts that basically hold this whole thing on. <clears throat> I'll crawl underneath it and have a look. Again, there is an oxygen sensor right there where that wire is. Um, you can see in there that's one of the crossover areas I need to go ahead and loosen up so I can actually change this out. So hopefully it won't be too, too bad. And at least it's new, so everything's nice and clean. I'm not fighting a bunch of, uh, you know, rusted or corroded on bolts. I've got one uh, Allen screw there that's uh, open. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that. And these uh, two bolts here are concave, and they could collect dirt and stuff too. So I got some caps I'll put on those. So just some things that I'll do while I have the bags off. Um, the bag will have to come off. It was actually really easy. And then they fit down inside these little rubber areas here, which I'll probably hit with 303 uh, before I reinstall them. That way they pretty much last forever. Um, just some things I'll walk you guys through. I couldn't find any videos. It would have been nice to have somebody uh, be able to show me how to do this. I don't have a manual on it or none of that stuff. So um, that's kind of why I'm making this. You can fast forward if you want to uh, through my talking and stuff, but I'm just pointing some of the things out. So I order all these dress-up caps from uh, AliExpress. You can get like a huge multi-pack for just $1.99 or buy them over here for about 30 bucks. So if you don't mind waiting the six weeks to get this stuff, uh, which I don't, um, it's kind of worth it. So I was able to just go ahead and dress some stuff up. Um, I even have these rubber vacuum tube block offs and protect the threads here. Some covers there, another one here. Just something to protect them over time. And that way, uh, when it comes time for me to start um, removing these bolts for changing pads or something like that, uh, they're in perfect shape like the day they came from the factory. So it looks like uh, these two bolts are going to have to come out here. Um, this one I won't have to worry about. That's actually uh, for the support of the uh, rear crash bar. I have to get underneath there and see what I'm going to have to do to loosen some of this stuff up. And then uh, I can get the first pipe in, which is sitting right there. So eventually I'm probably going to get the ECU reflashed, especially after I do this today with the k and and the better flow uh, slip-ons. Of course, it's going to mess with the timing and everything else. But um, we've got this little dress-up plate here. So I'll have to loosen this up so that when I do get this undone and the two bolts and I pull this out, then I can uh, 
I basically just slide it through here and then get the new one in place. So I'll do this side first and then we'll work on this one here. So it looks like I'll have to loosen up this clamp. It does come with this little curvy bar. I have to remember to put the uh, the fancy little cover on there uh, using this here uh, for the new one. But I don't think it's going to be too bad. And like I said, the cool thing is um, <clears throat> it, it's brand new. So I don't have to worry about, uh, of course these are stainless, which is nice, but still I don't have to worry about trying to fight anything, uh, corrosion or whatever. So first things first, uh, I'll get this loosened up. Uh, I believe these are 10s. Uh, that's the nice thing about bikes like this, they use a lot of 10 millimeter, which is kind of cool. So um, let's get this loosened up, and at least I can get the first pipe on it, and then compare it to the other side uh, after it's on there. All right, so you don't have to waste your time running back and forth like I did. Uh, this is a number eight. These little covers here, and then again, these are tens. So we'll go ahead and get this loosened up, and uh, then we'll get this loosened up. I get the bolts out and get this one off. Oh, and you can do this on the side stand if you really, really want to jack it up. You can. Um, <clears throat> it looks like the jack will fit right in between here which is nice leaving this empty. Uh, I may go that route, but right now I'm actually okay with the clearance I have with this just sitting on its side stand and uh, just laying on like a little little rug here. All right, so it's a good idea to get to the oxygen center plug because you don't want to unscrew that and twist the wire all up and uh, possibly damage it. Those things are expensive. I tried to just pull the bottom out. There wasn't enough room. So on this bike here, the seat comes off with the uh, the key, which is nice. And then you just go ahead and you take this one screw out here. And then this just pulls out these little rubber stops. And then we'll take the black portion off. And I'll show you where the, uh, the plug is for the oxygen sensor. All right, so I was able to get the uh, oxygen sensor wire off. Um, <clears throat> once I get this out of here, I'll kind of explain how that works. Uh, the biggest pain, of course, this came right off because it's a bolt. Over here they use the stupid screw and um, I don't know what the heck they put that on with but it's almost like welded in place. I tried everything. I tried different types of impacts. I have one that you hammer. I have this one here and it wouldn't move. So the good thing is I don't have to really worry about that right now unless I'm messing around with the uh, ABS system. But I was able to get this pulled out just enough to be able to reach up in there and get a hold of the uh, oxygen sensor plug. So that was the hiccup I ran into. So um, anyway, there's always bound to be one. I'll probably just touch this up a little bit. Um, <laughs> it's kind of rough right now. Uh, not that that's a big deal, but uh, I'll probably just touch it up because there's some bare metal. I don't need any rust uh, showing up. So um, basically, I was able to get that off. Now let's go ahead and get these out of here so I can get this uh, first uh, pipe off of here. All right, so the biggest thing is you have to reach up in there with a screwdriver. You'll see it on the left hand side. It's kind of hard to show you that. And uh, just get a screwdriver in there and pull this to the side a little bit. And then uh, this pops right out. I'll put some dielectric grease and stuff in there uh, just to um, promote adhesion and stuff. So already this is actually uh, pretty heavy. And you can see, you can't see through it. It's got baffles all over it. And I guess there's a catalytic converter in there and stuff like that. Um, I didn't want to go ahead and butcher these pipes. Some of the guys modify it, which is cool. Um, I just wanted to keep them stock. I'm going to reuse the box that my new exhaust came in and uh, that way I can go ahead and store them for the future. Uh, even after I get it reflashed, uh, Ivan Tune basically will set it back to factory at no charge, which is kind of cool. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and get the uh, oxygen sensor off of here installed on the new one. And at the same time, we'll go ahead and get this installed back on the bike and at least one side will be done. So there's the oxygen sensor on there. Everything lines up perfectly with this particular company. Uh, I'll put the link. I actually got these on Amazon for like, um, I think it was like 329 And of course, Prime, so free shipping. And I had to pay some tax, but that's okay. And the neat thing is, is the um, original hardware, which is kind of color-coded with the bike, which is nice, um, still fits inside the inserts that have uh, basically the nut welded inside here. So I'm going to get some... Uh, down with your grease, like I said, down inside there. Feed this through and um, get this bolted up and get it attached and then hook that up and then we can do a kind of a comparison for the left and the right side. The left will be stock, the right side will be this new one. Okay, get that one on. These are tightened down. 
Um, this bracket that basically wraps around and holds this on is in two pieces, so you just kind of hook that up, swing it around. That allows access to be able to get the oxygen sensor in there without ruining anything. And uh, now I'll just reach up in there and uh, reconnect that wire, tighten up these clamps here, and this side will be done. Uh, unfortunately, fighting with uh, this stupid thing here, this uh, screw, uh, chewed up about 35 minutes uh, before I realized I didn't need it. I could just pull this out most of the way and just reach behind it. So I'll do that and get this side cleaned up and buttoned up and then uh, I'll get on the other side. But I will show you the difference in the pipes already. You can see the tapered stock and it's the aftermarket. But it's basically it's what's inside that really makes the difference. Sorry, the neat thing. Again, you can see the oxygen sensor. It's in the same spot. Uh, I do have this shield uh, reattached. And uh, everything lined up nicely. And of course, I just need to eventually, when I'm done with the other side, just kind of clean everything up, which I'll do. And then, okay, this is the new one there. Uh, it's got a spiral effect inside, like a rifling uh, that pushes it into some of the baffles. Pretty happy with these, man. So I'll get on the other side. I've already got that that bracket way down in there that's already loosened up so that when I take the other side off I can get that going and at the same time uh, pull it off I think what I'll probably do is put the block uh, that rubber block I normally use underneath this to kind of lift it up a bit give myself some more room and uh, again we'll just keep going with this and that screw there would look better black along with this one here, so I'll probably go ahead and cap those and stuff too with the uh, dress up uh, covers I have. But um, yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, it's going to be neat. And then I'll take you guys through a start up. And get this side here all buttoned up, cleaned up. And of course we had the cap there and one back there just to kind of finish it off. It's supposed to be black and <laughs> I like it to look black. have my uh, rubber block in here. So the bike is standing up a bit more. That'll give me more room uh, to go ahead and work with the clamps. I don't anticipate this side being uh, as hard as the last one because of that uh, oxygen sensor. And then what I'll do is I'll lift the whole bike up so I can go ahead and just kind of polish up the uh, the rims. They're a little bit dirty still. Uh, it was hard for the guy to get at the detailer. I've been like putting these rubber things on, any bare thread just to protect them and to dress them up. So let's go ahead and get this pipe off. So again, I re I've loosened up this clamp. This will all come off of one piece and then I can actually put uh, the new piece of this, which is chrome, which is nice, along with this, back on. So right now that's loose. So really all I have to do is take off the two bolts back here, right on top, and then uh, get this muffler out of the way. All right, so we can see on the old one, we got a nice uh, bushing slash spacer up here. The new kit actually comes with one. It was in this plastic bag here. I slid it on. And then, of course, this one here is all welded, which is nice. Well, this one here is not. So what the kit also did is it came with uh, clamps and everything you need to go ahead and set it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully match the new one up with the old one and get all these... Uh, these angles and stuff like that just right so that's what I intend to do here and that way when I put it on um, yeah, it'll be pretty much ready to go I probably won't super tighten down everything in case there's any tweaking I have to do especially right here and then of course in uh, uh, the shield and stuff also but at least I can get it pretty darn close okay so this got everything close again nothing's tightened up right now um, a little little I don't know, a little fussy trying to get into place, but seems to work okay. Anyway, I'll get this fitted on the bike. What I do around this bushing here is put just a real thin layer of Vaseline. Now, before you guys freak out on me, yes, yes, I know it's going to burn off, but at least for now, it'll help with sliding this into place. And then, um, because the exhaust, of course, heats up, it can go ahead and burn off later on. I don't care. I just don't want to have to fight too much with it. Down here, chrome on chrome, this was okay. Uh, to go ahead and put together and again once it's all in the place I can go ahead and tighten up the clamps uh, slide this one um, this one here up into place up into there to hold that shield on and then of course tight, tighten it up so um, anyway let me go ahead and get some Vaseline on that and at the same time 
um, go ahead and get this on the bike, get it fitted in, then I can start snugging everything up. Same thing, a little dress up cover there, one there, that way anything that's black stays black. As like I said, I still need to raise this up and uh, I wanted to double check the belt, uh, since it's belt drive, my first belt drive of my life, and then uh, clean the rims off since they're hard to get to when the bags are on. So this is all done. This It's, it's a little finicky guys, but you know, hell if I can do it, man, anybody can do it. Got the bushing in there all tightened up. Like I said, I had a little bit of Vaseline to make it slip in, so that'll burn off. And we have the uh, plate here. The little shroud that kind of dresses it up from that to here. And at the same time, hides all the clamps and everything else. And there are quite a few. You can see that's all the stuff down there that had to be tightened up. And that was the fun part. I get to go ahead and fire this thing up and see what it sounds like. At idle, the other pipes were good, the stock pipes, but when you gave it throttle, those bat baffles basically ate it all up. And uh, everybody that talked about this bike, uh, they said by opening up the exhaust and letting that exhaust free flow, uh, it's going to run a bit cooler. And when I reflash the uh, ECU eventually here from Ivan, he's going to set the sp uh, fan speeds to come on lower. So it'll run even cooler from there. And the cooler the better. So in all actuality, this should only take about an hour, guys. <clears throat> hour to an hour and a half, as long as you got all the tools and all the hardware you need. Uh, of course, filming and then running into a problem like that uh, stuck screw <laughs> that eats up time. And then, of course, I got to film and all that stuff, too. So I just wanted you to be with me when I started this for the very first time. And like I said, I look forward to getting this up on the lift and... Uh, I don't know, just checking things out. Uh, underneath is pretty clean. So enough of the uh, yik yak, and let's go ahead and get this started up. One thing I like about this bike too is uh, you can go ahead and turn it on, pull your key out, and then you can turn it off without the key, but you can't turn it back on. So here we go. <laughs> videos uh, some of the guys are talking about when they go to slide their uh, motorcycle jack underneath it doesn't go all the way through and of course the easiest thing you can do is just find a block I use the rubber block you can use a couple two by fours or whatever to have the bike stand more upright and then uh, just take your time make sure everything's where it should be and as I start jacking it up again I'll stop and make sure it's where it's supposed to be and then I'll bring the jack up as high as it can go and of course what you want to make uh, sure of is as you jack it up, make sure the front and rear is coming up at the coming up at the same time. Uh, you don't want to have, you know, the, the front down or the rear. That means it's not centered. Don't take the chance. Bring it back down and uh, move the jack left or right until the whole bike comes up um, in the center. So let me go ahead and get this up there, and then we can have a look. So here's a good example. Uh, I took a gander just to guess at uh, where this went. Started the jacket up, rear tires up, front tires down, so I'm going to carefully lower it and then move my jack to the right. Eventually I'll figure out and I'll be able to use some visual cues here for the next time I do this on uh, where to put the jack. So let me lower it, move it forward a bit and uh, try jacking it up again. Again, you want both to come up at the same time because uh, your jack could fail. And on the other hand, you spend a lot of money on the bike, but more importantly, your body. You don't want to get hurt and have this thing come over on you. Okay, so standing here, it looks like the next time I set it up, because you've got the front and the rear both off the ground, and it looks like if I take the left red leg and put it right in the middle between the K and the A in Kawasaki, now uh, that's how I'll know from now on. It's just one of those deals. Even my VMAX and even my VTX, I just have to figure it out. So I'm going to bring this all the way up. Never relying on the uh, bottle jack. Use any locking pins that uh, your jack has. 
And then once this is up, I can use my little roll around seat, which converts into a creeper. And I can go ahead and do any last minute cleanups and all the rest of it. So, again, we're looking, it's on the frame. Over here, it's on the frame. So, let's get this checked up. And there we have it. Again, it's on the mechanical locks, not relying on the jack. It's all the way up in the air. And now this will give me time, uh, give me some room to go ahead and spin around, check out the bottom, which I haven't done yet, and, uh, and polish up the rims a little bit, just have a look at a few things. But guys, that's how you basically use a motorcycle jack. Um, there's one guy out there that talks about, you know, it says 1,500 pounds, and then by the time you work with uh, all the fulcrum points and all this other stuff, that the bottle is only good for 800, well, no. The bottle's probably, I don't know, 2500 to 3000 and the manufacturer took in all that in consideration where they tell you the total jack, not the bottle, the total jack is good for 1500 pounds. Uh, otherwise, they'd be sued, and people would be millionaires overnight. So, anyway, get yourself a good one. I've had this thing for, what, since 2004. Uh, I've got some uh, videos on, um, you know, servicing the bottle, uh, servicing, you know, new pads, and, you know, oiling things up. Just be smart, man. Take your time and just make sure, you know, your, your, your jack is in good working order because it's just important as everything else, especially with your underneath and your life is at stake. Hey, okay, rims are all cleaned up. Front and back. Just need to throw the seat on and I'm going to leave it at this level here because it's easy being as tall as I am to go ahead and work out it at this height here. So put the seat back on. I get the bags back on. Uh, everything is fully adjusted and uh, cleaned up and covered and all that. You know, just little things here and there. No more shiny bit here, up in here. Some of this has been cleaned up and stuff too. Again, I really like those caps. You know, it just kind of customizes your bike without uh, going over the top. I gotta admit, the plates look nice, man. They don't look like the aftermarket stuff. Um, some of them, like the Aquapovic, which are great uh, pipes for some of the sport bikes, you know, they still end up looking kind of goofy and stuff. But some of the guys don't care. That's kind of a look you're looking for. So, now I'm just gonna go ahead and lower this down and get it off the jack after I've uh, put the bags and the seat on. And then, uh, guys, that'll be it. So, I'll give you one final look at the finished product. And then um, I'll go ahead and get this on YouTube. I like to use a low to medium strength thread locker when I put stuff like this back in because, of course, it's a motorcycle. It does vibrate. And uh, the neat thing about this is, of course, you can break it loose any time, but at least it keeps it from vibrating loose. So I'll get some of that on here, and uh, we'll put the bags back on in the seat. See, I just snug these down, and, of course, using the Loctite, make sure they don't come loose. And uh, you see how they start to get chewed up after, well, just a little bit. It's just the nature of the business when it comes to sockets. So we're going to go from this to this. And I get a multi-pack of these things from AliExpress for like a buck ninety-nine, And I order a bunch, that way I only pay for shipping once. So now I get the liners back in there and I was able to get some really good ones. They're pretty nice, they say Vulcan Nomad, but that's fine. And these fit just perfectly into here. I like them because uh, I just take the flap, kind of fold that in on itself. But it holds all the stuff, nothing rattles, scratches up the bags. And then, of course, I can take some of this stuff out and use it as an overnight bag. If, or, you know, say I went up to Detail and wanted to spend a couple nights up there, um, I can basically use these as a little suitcase. I'm having a matching one from the same company uh, for the actual uh, trunk and stuff pretty soon. So that's it, guys. Everything's all back together. Pipes are awesome. Just took it for a little drive just around the block. A little bit of popping, so I think I'm definitely going to go ahead and get it retuned. And I'll be about another three, four hundred dollars, whatever it is. But then after that, I'm pretty much done with the uh, the upgrades between the K&N air filter, better flow, the pipes, and then the tune. It'll be awesome. And of course, don't be alarmed if you guys get pipes and you put them on and you see a little smoke coming out of there and you have some smell. 
that's just from what they uh, sprayed the insides with, kind of like a shipping oil, as you could call it. So that, that'll basically burn off after a while and then get replaced by a little bit of carbon and stuff. So that's it. Can't wait to take this for a real drive, but um, I have some work to do on the VMAX. So you know what to do, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification for future content.